Hi all, let's look at the second game featured in the, the research article which has hit the world of AI and computer chess. So this is the second game mentioned E4 from Stockfish. Alpha 0 played E5 and went into a Berlin defense because of Knight F6, which as we know is very popular at super GM levels of human chess. D3, Bishop C5, White took on C6, D takes. The pawn is immune at the moment because of queen d4 but after white castles now this pawn is fair game and it's protected with knight d7 the usual move is knight d2 slightly rarer c3 but has been played before black castles d4 bishop d6 bishop g5 the queen moves rook e1 f6 bishop h4 queen f7 knight bd2 a5 bishop g3 rook e8 so that e5 point is being reinforced all the time knight f8 c4 and this becomes a bit closed now after c5 so this is fascinating in itself because traditionally chess engines excelled in open tactical positions and they weren't so good at more positional maneuvering so this is setting the climate for a classic what you'd used to use against computers yourself maneuvering type games where the the brute force wasn't so such a big deal so how does black alpha zero understand this position b6 knight h4 g6 knight hf3 and it's tempting at some point to aim for f5 but here there's there's issues bishop d7 rook a d1 we see rook e7 h3 queen g7 so some shuffling around is it totally pointless rook a e8 so the rook's building behind the e5 point you can look at actually at all the black's pieces they've reinforced e5 so there's a kind of overprotection in which we call this overprotection but usually as an advanced point here it's it's a central point though and so let's see a3 h6 bishop h4 rook f7 we have some shuffling around now and here a different move instead of repeating we have actually a committal move a4 which is a move which would be attractive to most human eyes unless that pawn is going to be weak later but in this particular case white light square bishop has gone so what can actually make that weak later it's actually fixing down white's queen side quite well it seems a fairly logical move King h1, rook fe7. So some more shuffling here. Until now, another committal pawn move, g5. So it seems white is trying to tease black into these pawn moves on both sides of the board. Will there be any uh, who will actually favor, be favored by these pawn moves? Knight g6. This does mean that f4 is very reinforced at the moment but that f5 square is potentially weak and we see knight f1 which is a classic positional maneuver to try and highlight sometimes f5 not maybe to occupy it immediately just just to mark it out and lock it down rook f7 knight e3 we see knight e7 so f5 is protected a bit more queen d3 and white is also locking down on both sides of the board here in fact h5 h4 now this does weaken that g4 square a little bit especially if this pawn later was playing for f4 this g4 would be even weaker so white now is is playing some pawn moves knight c8 rook e2 and now g4 knight d2 queen h7 some pressure on e4 here king g1 bishop f8 and this creates that lovely blockade square for the knight that knight coming to d6 to put pressure on e4 as well as c4 this is a very interesting as well as potentially pl play for b5 knight b1 knight d6 so a very very nice blockading knight here knight c3 trying to put pressure on a4 bishop h6 now this is a very interesting decision coming up potentially is this bishop going to exchange itself off for this knight first we see rook a8 some shuffling Queen g6 and white seems a bit agitated now after queen g6 for some reason decides uh, to play 
f4, which, as I mentioned earlier, this might leave g4 permanently weak. So a very, very interesting decision. Trying to, it, it basically opens up the position. Before this, I mean, the position is very closed. Uh, if I put on uh, my own kibitza uh, just to check, it's it's giving f4 as the move uh, to play here on on my Houdini chess engine as one of the main moves to play. Uh, it seems maybe that black might be starting to build up pressure with bishop f4 at leisure. This might represent some part of the explanation why f4 perhaps should be taken away from black. Is this the right point to take it away? Does it create more downsides? Does it create a g4 downside? Well, we see g takes f3, rook takes f3. And in fact, we have almost symmetrical weaknesses on both sides of the board on light squares, and it's black who has the light square bishop. So this is very interesting from the point of view of weakness cre creation and marking out squares. And in fact, now with f5 being eyed more, maybe knight f5 to lock down black. So black actually gave up the dark square bishop. This often represents a light square strategy to give up the dark square bishop. And it does mean that this pawn might actually be weaker in the long run, especially if you consider that the supporting pawn is not able to play b3. So this might be a weakness later. But also e4 under pressure, maybe even h4 under pressure. Rook takes, we see king e7, queen h7, and now rook g7. So some simplification. With the simplification, the weaknesses are still marked here permanently. It seems that white is suffering on both sides of the border a little bit with these light squares being marked out. Rook e3, rook g8, rook g g3. So is another pair of rooks going to come off? Yes. What does this sim simplification represent here? Well, after queen h6, it seems that black is looking in to white's position. If you look at both sides, this is a beautiful blockading knight. And now the queen is actually threatening queen c1 check. It seems as though basically white is being positionally outplayed. The a4 seems to have done a, a wonderful job of making sure c4 is a bit weaker, uh, basically. But the immediate queen c1 check is parried. Bishop g4, as though now bishop d1, and maybe to b3 later is going to be dangerous. Even if a takes and queen takes, this centre pawn would drop off. Let's see, king h2. But at the moment, king d7. And now, perhaps black is truly threatening. Something like bishop d1. We see this move b3, which actually weakens a3. a takes, knight takes. And we see queen g6. White is really on the defensive here, looking after light square pawns. Bishop d1. And you can see now, there's even more pressure on white being put. This is starting to look a bit nasty after bishop d1. There's things like queen g4, for example, just putting even more pressure on the position. And maybe bishop a4 later to lock down a4. It's it's starting to look pretty unpleasant. White is being positionally outplayed. Knight f3, bishop a4, knight d2. King e7, bishop f2. You can see this torture on both sides of the board, these light squares. Symmetrical, almost symmetrical weaknesses on both sides of the board on light squares. Queen g4, queen f3. And now further simplification is encouraged. Basically, uh, black is saying, well, the end game's better for me. Look at all your light square pawns. Queen takes, bishop takes. So now there's an immediate threat of bishop e2. These light square pawns are not going anywhere. A4, as though A5 might be a concern, though, to try and counterattack. This is stopped in its tracks with knight B7. So still there's a concern now, an immediate concern, bishop D1, to try and win that one. We see knight B1. Knight A5 actually switching attention to C4 now, whilst keeping this blocked. Bishop E3, knight takes C4. This is just positional murder. Nimzovich would be proud here. Bishop d7, knight c3, and now black undoubles the pawn. c6, not worrying about any uh, potential check here. After king g1, c takes d5 is played. If knight takes d5 check, king e6 is fine. The knight's holding b6, this is fine. 
the, the knight's not going anywhere. There's nothing to actually attack it. And f5 would be on the cards later anyway to undermine this knight. So basically in this position, e takes d5 was played. Bishop f5, king f2, knight d6. And the torture continues now. An exchange of knights, so leaving just opposite colored bishops, which maybe you might think in some cases increases drawing chances. chances. Probably not here because white's losing maybe too many pawns here. a5 takes, we have an exchange of pawns basically there. But now look at this. This outside pass pawn represents potential uh, winning advantage. King c6. And now the king comes into the position, improving the aggressiveness of the king. Try and get to these pawns. Bishop c1, king g3. Yeah, these pawns are very vulnerable. We see here a4 tying down the bishop, perhaps, if it was thinking of doing anything. It has to keep an eye on a3 now. This pawn drops. And you can see now two pawns up. It's unlikely that the opposite colour bishops are helping white. And in fact, here after king e6, the game ended at move 87. Uh, maybe the operator resigned on its behalf, or it resigned. So yeah, this was a positional masterclass, basically. The exchange of the dark square bishop for the knight on e3, leaving white vulnerable in the end game on light squares. The earlier marking of light squares, the a4 fixing down b3, and then this stuff with white playing f4, we can g4 on the other side of the board. So light square weaknesses on both sides of the board. Exchange of dark square bishop uh, to get an end game where these weaknesses can be attacked, and they're pretty fixed targets at that point. So pawn started to drop off, which represented a decisive advantage. A wonderful game from, from alpha zero with the black pieces here defeating stockfish I hope you enjoyed that the time limit by the way if I didn't mention is one minute per move and alpha zero is without any opening book endgame book or anything it's without anything it just taught itself to play at this level by playing itself phenomenal comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much